You know, as a real estate agent, sometimes it's really hard to get the right adjustments and in, or the right comps for a subject property when you're getting ready to price it to go on the market or when you're getting ready to make an offer on behalf of a buyer and you'd like to give them some good pricing information to make sure you're on track. If either one of those are true and you'd like a quick, easy way to help you get those numbers and get more accuracy, invest a couple minutes in this video. Hey there, everybody. My name is Matthew Rathbun. I am here to make your life a little easier as a real estate agent, show you some ha hacks and tricks and best practices as a real estate agent or broker. And in this video, we're going to break down something yesterday that I posted. It was a two minute video of kind of the concept of this, lots of traction on it, lots of views and a whole bunch of emails and direct messages going, Hey, could you slow it down a little bit, give us more detail and show us the steps. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We are going to need three things as real estate agents, access to ChatGPT, access to the realtor property resource and access to your MLS. If you have those three things, we're ready to go. Let's jump right in there. But before we do, do make sure that you like this video and subscribe to the channel. It helps me, it helps the video and it'll get you, uh, get me and your algorithm to help you out more in the future. Thanks so much. All right, so I am gonna start with some data gathering steps here, and I'm gonna start with the my favorite gift to the real estate industry, the National Association of Realtors, Realtor Property Resource at NARRPR.com. And uh, I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna start off with the report section. So I'm gonna go to reports, click on the little down arrow here, and I'm gonna first start with a property report. And it says it's gonna ask me for the address. In this case, I have chosen this Dalman Place address. Now, Dalman Place uh, was a random choice in a neighborhood. These are not clients. They don't know I'm doing a market analysis example. I just chose a property address. And then I'm gonna say, okay, I want the property report and I'm gonna click run report. I'm gonna a little dialogue screen. It tells me that's running. While that report is cooking, I'm gonna go over back to the reports with the down arrow. I'm gonna click over here on Market activity report is the second RPR report I will want. It'll come down here and show you that's the report you're looking for. I am gonna to go to either type in the subject property address and it'll pull the surrounding market or a zip code or a subdivision name, whatever you wanna pull. Just make sure you're clicking on the market activity report and then we're gonna click on run. We don't worry about customization. We want all the data we can get. This isn't going to the client. This is stuff I need for this model. And so I now have downloaded the market activity report. When I go up here, click on it, give you option to download it. Um, and I'm gonna go back to my MLS. I'm gonna go into my MLS and do a regular search on the neighborhood. In this case, this is an Idlewild subdivision. And I am going to choose basically everything you would use while you're looking for comps anyways, a coming soon, active, active under contract, whatever your MLS equivalent of this is, temporary office, fine, pending is great, uh, closed. And if I choose closed, I want something no more than 180 days. Remember your basic CMA and adjustment uh, rules of thumb. Um, I don't really want to go more than 180 days if I don't have to. If you're in a rural market, you may not have neighborhoods, you have a one mile radius and there's not a lot of comps. The ChatGPT will adjust for that, but it's better to get similar comps in the neighborhood. And I'm just going to go ahead and say hit results. There's five matches. I'm going to hit results. I'm going to click all of them. I don't need to look at them. I don't care. If you have a nice little scan to make sure they're similar to size and cost your property, you might want to choose them. In this case, I've got some, uh, there's actually two segments to this. There are two types of homes. So I don't really want the uh, townhomes here. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And then this one is actually in a different area. Again, you gotta know your neighbor a little bit. That's fine. I'm gonna click on um, print and print to PDF. Once I have those elements, I'm now ready to start this process. So I am going to now drag into ChatGPT these three elements. So I have the NAR RPR's market activity report. I have the NAR RPR's uh, listing report or pro report on that particular property. And I have the uh, all the homes that have sold in a neighborhood for ChatGPT to turn through and look at, right? So I'm good. Now I'm gonna go and start with my first prompt. And I have a prompt book at matthewrathman.com forward slash AI 
that will help you uh, with some starter prompts that you can edit and make your own. And it's there, it's free, and you don't have to sign up for newsletter or anything. You just go download it. The link will be in the uh, description below. In this uh, prompt, I'm saying take the PDF information. Remember, we're giving it some data. We got to give ChatGPT a little little help here to know what we're looking for. ChatGPT has this PhD level brain in economics. It needs a little bit of help as to how to narrow down these things. It's going to understand those key industry words in the prompt, such as adjustments, pricing adjustments, or comp properties. So I'm saying, based on the uploaded PDF of sole properties in this neighborhood, please help me identify the top three most comparable homes to the subject property and explain why these are the best comps and suggest appropriate pricing adjustments if needed. And then I'm going to say, and by the way, here's the subject property. And it is important for you to add features of that property that you certainly do want adjustments for or just key features of it. If you don't, ChatGPT will use the tax records and it'll use the uh, uh, comp and, and RPR data but you want to make it a little easier for it. So I've given it that information. I'm going to go ahead and hit send, and it's going to go look through all the data in those PDFs, and then it's going to start to apply what it believes I'm asking for to all of that data and kick back with a response. Okay, and the response it came back with, uh, and it does, again, you're going to get a little bit different answers every time you do, even if you do the same prompt and the same steps, um, but you'll get the core answers just in a different, maybe, example or format. What we have here is a table. Now, if you see ChatGPT create a table, you can look at the top of the table at this down arrow key and click on it, and it'll export that table to an Excel spreadsheet you can use in other ways. And so it's it's what in, broken down to the properties, the prices, the bed and baths, I'm sorry, the bed and baths, the, the bedrooms and bathrooms, the square footage, the price per square footage, the core elements you would really know uh, and need to know from the MLS reports for your comps. And then the real magic happens. Here's your comparable properties. This is why we think it's a good comp. Here are the adjustments we think that need to be made um, from a price of a plus or a negative. And it gives me the adjustment range. Now that property was a little bit off. That's why the ranges were so high. This one was just 10 to 25,000. So this tells me this one was really kind of off, right? They had to adjust a lot uh, because it wasn't the best comp, but it did all the work for me, so we're fine. The end result of this is going to be adjustments, price ranging, um, and conversation and justification for what you're chosen. This is great for three people. First, for your seller, who obviously you are attempting to help price a home and get it on the market and help them capitalize on their equity. Number two, it's for the appraiser. If you do this well, the end result, we're going to have a few more prompts to go, will create a report, uh, an email or a Word document that you can send along with your market analyses to the appraiser who has scheduled an appraisal. So a little bit of work's done for them. They're going to, if you do this work and it's good, they'll likely use it expediting your appraisal and probably coming in at value. And then uh, the third party is for buyers. If you're a buyer agent, I strongly believe that they owe, uh, a, they are owed a CMA, that you're the buyer agent. You should do a market analysis of what they're going to offer to justify either the asking price or maybe even lower, or to show them there's more equity than what the asking price is according to your comps. Especially if you're doing this, it's going to take me longer to explain this than it really is for you to do it and kick back with a nice result. Now, at the end of that, it says the pricing recommendation, after I've given you all these justifications and adjustments uh, for that, uh, I'm going to tell you, I being an AI, that this is a breakdown of the um, property. Uh, if Assuming these are uh, premium features, and because it's located in a cul-de-sac, the price suggestion is $850,000, $850, $865,000. Now, just a little add-on here. Uh, I did this. The, the long way. And I came up at 861. That was the price I came up using. Traditionally, I teach this stuff. I usually get it pretty close to right. So it is right in the ballpark, um, which is really impressive. Now, that was the first prompt. The second prompt, I'm going to say, look, I want you to now take a little bit more. I want some more data about this. I want you to analyze again those PDFs. I want you to provide a summary of the market trends in the neighborhood, what the average and median sales prices, square footage, and all the rest are. Over the past, in this case, we want to go 180 days, not months. 
So you can adjust that and it's going to come back and do the same thing. It's going to give you uh, a new result and it's going to break down for you an, a, 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 a summary of the market that you can use for talking points and key elements and insight that you now have an, a preparation to go and have a conversation with your seller or a buyer or whomever. Now, once that's done and you've got that under your belt, we're going to go to another prompt here. Use the data and upload a PDFs and estimate a price range for the subject property. Uh, take into account the factors such as all these things. And so now we want a summary, another way of explaining the data it already gave us. And you see here, it's given us a lot of talking points and it's even talking about what's a conservative market value for sales price, a balanced market and a premium listing strategy. It's amazing to so say, okay, dear seller, if you really want to go crazy, you might be able to get 900,000. That's ridiculous. We're not going to go with that. And it comes right back to the original recommendation. So we would probably not give that. What I would do is say, look, I want you, since you brought it up, given the uploaded data, should I recommend AI help me with a strategy here? Should I recommend a competitive price strategy? Should I go below market, at market, premium market? Let's just say um, we want you to reevaluate because that last recommendation, 900,000, was a little insane. So here's what it's going to do. It's going to break down and say, okay, let's give you a different way to explain this process to your sellers. We still think the house is 850 to 865, which is a good solid range, nice tight range that I would expect. And here's some talking points. Here's some objection handling techniques if you want to. Um, why you should be competitive, why you maybe shouldn't, why you should be a little conservative. And if it's too long, you didn't want to read all that data, here's a nice conversational way of saying, stick with the market value pricing strategy. You're not selling a house, you're selling a package that checks every box. You can go a little while. The market is going to support you being a little aggressive in the premium pricing here. We've outlined what the objections may be, but we also, AI thinks that it's probably a good market for you to test out that uh, belief. And then we're going to try this last uh, prompt here. I have a home at this address with these techniques. Uh, how should I adjust the valuation? So this will be another summary prompt if you want it. I don't think you really need it unless you just want to get to the cut to the chase here. And at the end, you can keep going here and go, okay, uh, dear chat GPT, please create a email explaining our findings to the seller that I can attach with my market analysis. And I love this summarize the, all the findings with charts and graphs and tables and uh, and, uh, and create a Word document. All right, and we are going to ask it to do the work of taking all the data and all the information that we've created, making it look attractive, putting in a Word document, and as it analyzes this, the end result is going to be a link to download a Word document. All right, and now that it's created a downloadable Word document, I'm just going to click on that, and it's going to open up in Word a nice little clean um, evaluation here. It's going to tell us about what our comps were and some pricing per square footage. Not a big pricing per square footage fan, so you might want to tweak that. Um, but he's going to give us some adjustments and some comps and just a recommended pricing strategy. Nice little walkway or sum summation of what we worked on here to take to the sellers if you wish. And that is it. You can go crazy with this. Your imagination is the limit of the power that can be done here. And I mean, you can get even crazier and go say, hey, good, take all this to Canva and make me a nice little presentation with animations if you wanted to. It'll do that kind of stuff to you. So anyways, hopefully this is very helpful for you. As always, um, please do ask your questions and any other comments you wanna make in the comment section below. And it would be really helpful if you would like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for watching.